Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed to discuss the recent events in Iraq which have taken the world quite by surprise. Ajaz, the speed of the ISIS advance in Iraq seems to have surprised everybody. Fall of Mosul to almost coming up to the gates of Baghdad, 60, 70 miles from there, what the reports seem to suggest. Did you think that this was uh, on the cards? Well, no, I didn't think it was in the cards any more than anyone else thought. Uh, but now looking back, one can see that as soon as they were able to do three things. One, withdraw substantially from Syria for this operation. They'll of course go back again in full force. So that augmented their numbers. Second, they were able to make very big alliances. Uh, with the ex-Bathists, with the Naqshbandiya um, uh, order of the Sufis and a number of uh, other militant groups and so on. So um, uh, Hashemi, who is a, a former vice president of Iraq under Maliki in a former government, a uh, Sunni uh, person who, who says that the ISIS operation is really just a part of a much bigger uprising. Rapidity of it, I think, is accounted for by, by three factors. One, these are people who used to move very fast in Toyota trucks. And now they have got immense number of these mint condition humvees that the Americans had given to, to, to the Iraqis. Uh, this is not an army. This is not an army that, you know, needs tanks or this, that or the other. And they go with very light weapons. Um, that is one. Uh, very big one. The other is the popular support for them. That is, that is quite obvious that the Sunni people en masse through various kinds of alliances seem to be uh, on their side. Increasingly we find that ISIS individuals may in fact be a small number of who is on the move. So there is that. Uh, and the complete breakdown in, of the Iraqi army. Yes, it seems that the, they're facing about 2,500 uh, of these fighters, whatever the combination might be, and uh, 30,000 to 50,000 troops just ran away. This just ran away. Have, just what ran seems away. to have happened. Now, again, and handed over all the arms armaments. Yeah, but, I mean, the, they just them. left the armament and uh, the depots and so on. They just ran away. So these people went into the depots and got all of that stuff. Now, there are different explanations for it. One is uh, corruption. That, that, that officers' corps is so corrupt that it has no interest in fighting. It has been corrupted through 10 years of the sort of bribery upon which the Americans actually built this uh, armed force uh, uh, and so on. The other which the uh, government is claiming is that it was a, um, they were directed to not resist and fall back. Uh, we don't know why, but they disappeared. We don't know why. There may be some um, other reason. I mean, there is one speculation actually is that the idea is to create such a crisis and build up this threat to Baghdad so much that you entice the Irani uh, army, armed forces, on a considerable scale to do the fighting. And something that Iran has resisted until now to actually get involved in a big way in a uh, land war uh, in the region. Uh, so in that sense, it seems it could actually be a move not only on the Shia government in of al-Maliki, but also uh, against Iran. You know, again, interestingly, all the reports coming out of Iran are not saying that they will go into Iraq. In fact, they have said, we are not going to put our boots on the ground in Iraq. That's their official position, reiterated a number of times. And also saying, we don't know what the Americans are talking about. They are certainly not talking to us. And we don't see any joint possibilities of working with them in Iraq. So both are the statements that have come out of Iran. Very different from what the reports that the Western media is carrying and very different from what the United States seems to be hinting. At the same time, they, of course, have the other 
attack on Iran on the regard to the nuclear uh, issues and so on. But let's not get into that today. Looking at this overall picture, do you think that one of the agenda that the United States has really is trifurcation of Iraq, Kurd area, Sunni areas and Shia areas? I certainly think that that would be, that has been on their agenda since before the invasion of 2003. Uh, they effectively created a viable Kurdish state during the 10 years or so leading up to that invasion. Um, breaking up countries generally is very much on their agenda. Uh, quite possibly break up Syria and so on. So that trifurcation has always been there. Uh, <clears throat> whether that is something they have intended right now, I don't know. I think what has happened, one of the things that has happened with the United States is that they are moving along very pragmatically and creating contradictions for themselves. The same Sunnis, that uh, terrorists, these people, that they, th they say they are going to um, contain in, in, in Iraq and against whom they are going to defend the al-Maliki government are the ones they were sponsoring and will again sponsor in Syria. So what games are being played with whom? Am Americans are clearly, clearly in touch with Zawahiri and other uh, main leaders of al-Qaeda. The relationship between ISIS and al so-called core al-Qaeda, which is led by Zawahiri and so on, is very unclear and I think shifting. And Americans are playing, I think, both sides of the game. Out of that, whatever picture emerges, they have two or three contingency plans for each one of them. One, let it get to a point where you can trap the Iranis when they have no choice but to go in in a big way. Um, a small number of their advisors, at what they call advisors and so forth, are in Iraq and Syria. We all know that. Um, and, but that is a completely deniable. It's not boots on the ground in any real sense. That is one kind of thing. And that will work perfectly well with Israel and Saudi Arabia and the whole coalition led by the United States. If Iranis are able to withstand that pressure, and I believe they can, because unleashing the Shia militias in Iraq, they can control the situation. Exactly. In fact, the Shia militias are certainly armed and they have been, as you were saying, uh, with Irani advisors and so on. They have also a certain set they, of They're also very experienced. And they are certainly far more willing to fight than the Baghdad army that the United yes. States has sure. built. So given that, the problem that arises is then the, the agenda of having really a Shia, Sunni and a Kurdish statelets created over Iraq becomes really what comes into being. And then you have an Iraqi Shia state, a Syria insurgency with of course the same set of forces which are threatening Baghdad today. And then you have this uh, whole issue of Saudi, Turkey and a tacit Israel alliance which would be working on the other side. In this, it's very difficult to understand how the long-term interest of the United States, which is really oil, how it's going to be subserved. Look, I don't think Americans are in control. Uh, I think Americans, this is the consequence as of now. It is the consequence of the two fundamental things that they did at the time of the invasion. They went in with the assurance from the Shias that they will be welcomed with flowers. And they were welcomed with metaphorical flowers by the Shias. And they make that, made that whole alliance with all of these Shias, most rabid sectarian people like Al-Malik. That is one. So, and, and then they found themselves relying on them. And when Al-Sistani said, you have to to have the elections and create a parliament and that parliament becomes a constituent assembly. They had to do it and that constituent assembly basically disinherited the, 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 the Sunnis. But beyond that, the so-called debathification, all the Sunnis 
in any kind of government profession or any kind of profession anywhere were deprived of their livelihood and the army was majority Sunni. So al-Maliki sectarian government takes in the Shia officers who become the nucleus of his the so-called new army but all of the other the rest of the army doesn't even have a job anymore and they're hounded they're killed and they withdraw into places like Anbar province Fallujah and uh, Mosul and so on and uh, disappear into the population and now they're coming back I think there is going to be a tussle for power between the Baathists who are not you know sectarian in that sense they're not religious in any way uh, they may be secular sectarian, <laughs> you know, Sunni versus Shia, but not in the name of God. Uh, <clears throat> that and various other forces. However, two things. One is that ISIS has been able to capture so much very high level weaponry and so much money. By now they may have something in, on the order of two billion dollars in their coffers. That's what they'll get in the future, we do, but that's what they have. An immense amount of this a very good weaponry. So they can command, they can command. And Americans need them to send them back to, to Syria. Syria. So that is one sort of thing you're going to have. The other thing is, while this interim maneuvering is going on, is it in anybody's interest to have extremely rabid, ultra-fundamentalist Sunni state straddling half of Iraq and half of Syria. Um, this really is by far the most powerful fundamentalist movement. In fact, you know, uh, I mean, Tariq Taliban in Pakistan is nothing compared to this. It has the same kind of ideology and all that. But it is, the old Al-Qaeda was nothing compared to this. Nobody. You give them a state of that order, even as some interim um, solution, and you're stuck with it. And this are also oil-rich areas, even in Syria. That's the well, yes. only place there is some oil over there. They have taken, is over, they have to, taken over those little oil wells. And part of the money that is coming now on a monthly basis, they said that they're now earning something like $50 million a month from oil sales alone. Uh, and now there is the big refineries in the, 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 the yeah, yeah, general the area. Yeah, the biggest has fallen. Yeah. So it's yeah. fallen yeah. to them. They may yeah. not be able to control it, yeah. but it's yeah. fallen to them. When they can make it work, when, yeah. when they cannot, etc. You know, Ajaz, looking at all this, it does seem that the U.S. went into Iraq with the premise that the invasion would be paid for and the occupation would be paid for by the oil they get out of it. That hasn't happened. They felt that they would be able to remake Iraq the way they want it. That hasn't happened. And what has now emerged is a far more dangerous West Asia, North Africa, if you will, with the fall of Libya, with the fall of Iraq, breaking up of uh, Iraq currently, the kind of uh, insurrection going on in Syria, that we are really, this whole region has been really led into wars of different kinds and for which there doesn't seem to be any immediate uh, solutions in sight. Well, um, uh, two or three responses very quickly. One, uh, the new con said in the beginning that it will take us 30 years to remake the region. So we are only 13 years into that. We aren't even half way there. So that's one thing. So if, uh, that doesn't disturb them. Secondly, I believe that not the whole of the US state by any means, but very powerful elements in uh, people who provide the policy inputs, Kagan and all, all of these people, uh, Kagan whom now uh, Obama is uh, quoting, from his latest book. Uh, these neocons who are very influential in large parts of the policy making establishment have always wanted to break up 
constituted states into little warring statelets. Um, that's one way to control these states that, and to destroy whatever secular nationalism there was in these states. All of this functions enormously in the favor of Israel. Nothing could work in the favor of Israel com you know, compared to what they have done over the last 10 or 12 years. And that whole part of the U.S. state, which is very much tied up there, not all of it, but lots of it is, perfectly willing to do all this. Um, they don't lose anything. Problem has been, I have always sort of said, what happens when you break up all of this and you can't control the fragments? That's exactly what's happening now. Yeah. If there's a constituted state, you can put all kinds of pressures there, you can get into all kinds of negotiations, you can give them some, you can take some. There's somebody to at the other end who also has certain rational state interests. Um, now there are not going to be any such people for you to deal with. And fragments are going to be so many that you can't control it. I think there must be half at least of the Turkish uh, establishment who must have been sitting there wondering what is it we have unleashed. Because these fundamentalists, they, they want Turkey and Saudi Arabia and the whole lot. You know, this is what I'm saying, that while it might appear on paper, breaking up the states, divide will lead to rule. But the point we are saying is divide is not going to lead to rule, but is actually going to lead to continuous wars in the region, which at the end of the day will not lead to a resolution in terms of stable states, yeah. what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah. So effectively, this kind of you know, opening out inter of internecine wars, which was they thought in their interest, actually has now led from Afghanistan, Iraq is the only exception, to North Africa. Large parts of it having become militarily unstable with wars going on. Nigeria, you have, uh, you know, uh, other places. Libya, of course, is the classic example. All this region from that, Nigeria, Somalia to now Iraq, and of course Afghanistan is in, in some kind of military wars of this kind. Right. And that to me is, is a disaster for at least this region. The United States is protected by various oceans, only their energy may be a little some at some risk. But for all of us who are in the region, it's a huge threat. Absolutely. I mean, there would be a dozen fraternal genocides. You know? And the way it's going. Yeah, the way it is going. In, in Iraq alone. Turkoman Shia versus Turkoman uh, Sunni, Kurdish Shia versus Kurdish Sunni, Kurds against Arabs, Arabs and you know, you when the thing begins to melt, and you have a situation in which everybody is against everybody, you have numerous fraternal genocides. You know, there was a st statement that the neocons used to make that you can't make an omelette without breaking an egg. Unfortunately, the states are not eggs and what is what they're building or trying to build unfortunately doesn't qualify as an omelette. So this is the whole uh, yeah, issue. Yeah, you see, they are breaking up states in a way that you can't even have, let's say in Iraq, tri tripartite looks very good at the map. There's not going to be a tripartite division. You make that, it's going to be as unstable as, uh, you know, territorially unified Iraq. So it's not that kind of thing that is going on. It is actually going, you make a society break down. And in modern times, communications and weaponry levels and fund levels and all of those things being what they are, you cannot insulate this in a region or in a cluster of regions. It will have global repercussions. Of course. Of course. Pe people, actual people can travel. Once they have that kind of power, no one is going to be safe. 
I mean, let's look at it. 9-11 happened with pen knives. That's you know, so it was really taking over aircraft with pen knives. Now you've okay. given them all the sophisticated yes. weaponry, as, and, as you expect, result, yeah. and you expect yeah. nothing to These happen. These are people no. who didn't have anything sophisticated. Uh, no one knew them. They were marginal forces in their countries. Now they're dominant forces in their countries. From Pakistan, Afghanistan, all the way to the um, Mediterranean shores of North Africa. Even beyond Nigeria, even beyond. Somali, yes. Somalia. Yeah, so, so you know, it's right. really it's come this to a whole huge, region. huge swath, and and then it goes into Russia and it goes into China and into Europe. So things don't look good right now. The Americans have uh, are claiming. Tony Blair has said that this is nothing to do with 2003. It's very much 2003 coming back to haunt all of us. And uh, we have to very see how Very specific really decisions goes. that they made. Very yes. specific decisions. So we have to really see how it develops further. It, at the moment, it does seem that the Shia areas, Baghdad, etc., seem to be holding because what you said, the Shia militias have mobilized. So th no. that uh, way it's, it's uh, In Baghdad, you see the ethnic cleansing of the Sunnis was so immense in two waves of the civil war, uh, around 2004 and then 2006 that it is, it is uh, almost completely a Shia city now. So therefore, the ability of the Shia militias to hold that part of, the, uh, of the Iraq is much yeah, greater. Yeah. And, and uh, ISIS and even the Ba'athists are not going to uh, attack Baghdad as such. They may surround it, they may destabilize it, they may do various other things, but they're not going to try and take the other threat, of course, is again uh, hitting back at Assad because that's where they got their yes, initial yeah. impetus once, from. Once they have stabilized this situation or they perceive to have stabilized it sufficiently for themselves, they'll go back to Syria and go back to Syria with much more power than they, were, they had previously. So a completely second wave of Syrian war will start after this sort of you know, subsiding for a bit in between. Thank you, Ajaz. I think this is a situation that we will have to watch as it develops. It's clear the U.S. does not really have any game plan of that is holding. And on one side, they support al-Maliki and the Shia sectarianism. On the other hand, they support Sunni sectarianism in Syria. So two parts of the territory, they're doing completely different policies, it appears. And of course, you have Saudi Arabia and Turkey behind all this, including the Gulf monarchies. So it really is a long-term development that we need to watch. And News Click will keep watching this along with you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.